This is a video of an arthroscopic latte by Matt Ravenscroft. This is a left shoulder viewing from the posterior port. The cuff's intact, the bicep's intact. You can see there's a, a lot of bone loss anteriorly and a very large hill sac which does engage. Firstly we need to establish the e portal, and this is from an out-to-in technique using a needle. Looking in the rotator interval, we want to bring the needle so it's quite high on the rotator interval, so our angle down onto the glenoid neck will be optimal. So this is the right position. And through this port we're going to bring in the cool pulse and do our soft tissue clearance, glenoid neck preparation, and remove the rotator interval and the anterior ligaments. Firstly I'm just going to remove the cartilaginous flap off the anterior part of the glenoid. And then we're going to resect the middle glenohumeral ligament Start to clear the capsule of the inner aspect of the subscaparous tendon. It's important to remove a lot of this tissue as it will get in your way when you do your subscap split. So we just use the cool pulse to create the plane between the capsule and the subscap. And all the tissue to the right of this will be removed. It's important to clear the entire subscap and superiorly. Using the shaver now on oscillate mode to remove the tissue and clear as medially as you can. It will give you a much better view later when you come to look through your subscap split. Now back in with the vapour, we're just going to mark the level of the graft. So this is the inferior mark and the superior mark. And that's what will guide our subscap split. Now start clearing the rotator interval. And we're working especially hard on the tissue on top of the subscap here as a clear view of the undersurface of the subscapularis is necessary when you put your wires through when you come to do your coracoid part of the procedure. It's often easier to define the plane between the subscap and the conjoint tendon using the shaver on oscillate mode. And now we can start seeing the undersurface of the coracoid, the coracochromial ligament going north and the conjoint tendon going down. And this is the coracochromial ligament that's being removed by the vapour and this will expose the superior surface of the coracoid process. You also want to expose the undersurface of the coracoid as this will be the part that's in contact with the glenoid neck. And again work medially to clear the top of the subscap. 
We're now ready to bring in our next port, which is the D or the CD port. And this spinal needle needs to be parallel to the top of the subscapularis, but about a centimetre anteriorly, so you can work in front and behind, i.e. anterior and posterior to the conjoint tendon. Now looking in from this port, we're looking over the top of the humeral head with the glenoid on fas and the top of the subscapularis with now the conjoint tendon in view. Now we want to identify the axillary nerve which will be in the plane between the subscap and the conjoint tendon. So clearing tissue off the subscap will develop the plane and if you push through and just use the vapour just as a probe and clear the tissue you'll see the axillary nerve in front of us just going underneath the subscap muscle so now back onto the glenoid neck preparation Again, viewing through the D port, working through the E port. Clear away this tissue here because it will again get in your way when you do your subscap split. And then bring in a shaver, a burr, to create the bed for the graft. And you want a nice bleeding bed that's quite a flat bed. Once you finish bearing, you should be able to see the glenoid bed area. And this is a J port, and this is the port we'll be using to the subscap split. And you, you need a good angle with the spinal needle to create the subscap split. So now we're still viewing through the D port and using the vapor through the J port to clear anterior to the conjoint tendon to start to look for the pec minor tendon. And you should be able to strip all the way down until you can see the top edge of the pectoralis major muscle and its tendon coming across around the side of the conjoint tendon. You can just see the muscle belly of the, of the pec major to the left, at the bottom of the screen. So now working more medially, again clearing the coracoid, clearing the adventitial tissue in front of the conjoint tendon. If we go medially, we'll start to see the muscle belly and tendon of pec minor. So you can just see now the muscle belly of pec minor coming into the tendon, into the coracoid process. Now we're going to make the end port. So the spinal needle is through the end port and I'm imagining if I push this spinal needle through the conjoint tendon and through the subscap, that will be the right angle onto the glenoid. Next, bring the long switching stick from the back and go in between our marked superior and inferior marks on the glenoid and then push through the subscap tendon. This will exit very medially, medial to the lateral border of the conjoint tendon. So just using the short switching stick I'm trying to visualize the tip of the long switching stick. So again, now I pass the spinal needle through the conjoint and just see if it touches the tip of the long switching stick. If it does and it's in the same plane, then it's the correct port placement for the M portal. So use the short switching stick through M, push the conjoint tendon medially, and then thread the long switching stick through the subscap tendon so it lies on the lateral edge of the conjoint tendon, tendon retracting it medially. 
and now you can start your subscap split from the long switching stick again viewing through the D portal using the vapor through the J portal you need to use the vapor parallel to the top board of the subscap tendon initially until you start to see some articular cartilage once you see that then you'll have a reference point as how lateral or how medial you are in the substance of the subscap tendon an internal and external rotation of the arm will help you in this way it will either bring more subscap towards you or it will slacken the subscap in internal rotation so now we can just see some articular surface and clear the tendon away and the remnants of the capsule on the inner border and you can safely work through this muscle because the nerve is on the outer surface of the muscle so on the inner surface of subscap you can go very deep because you'll be safe from the nerve so now we're just about to see the bed of our glenoid come into view then we can just use a soft tissue shaver on oscillate mode just remove some of the fibrils of muscle and some of the redundant capsule left over and it just gives a better clearer view of the bed and to give you a better view of this the long switching stick that's going through the subscap is being pushed down which essentially pulls the top border up now we're going on to the pec minor release for the pet minor release you can either view through D and work through J or view through J and work through M here we're looking and viewing through J and working through the M portal which often gives a better line of attack onto the coracoid process so working from inferiorly up with the vapor pointing towards the coracoid and up which is a safe way to use it because it's away from the brachial plexus the pet minor should just release off there's often um, a difficulty in finding the edge of the conjoint tendon and the start of the pec minor which is this small area of tissue here now but this medial side of the conjoint tendon needs to be mobile uh, if not it won't fit through your subscap split So now we're just going to clear up the anterior border of the coracoid process as we're now going to get ready to start making our uh, drill holes through the coracoid. And I'm going to clear this all the way medially until I can see some fibres of the coracoid clavicular ligament. To create the H port, bring in a spinal needle so that it's perpendicular to the surface of the coracoid process and again sometimes it's easy to view through D to get the appreciation of whether you're perpendicular or not so this is a little bit too towards the tip of the coracoid so here I'm imagining that I can get an alpha and a beta either side of this spinal needle I use a subscap splitter just to make the hole for the metal drill guide and then the most important bit of the procedure really is getting this correct so I use a, a wire through the alpha on freehand to try and work out where the tip of the coracoid process is and I go about a centimeter medial to this and then when I've worked out where my alpha is going to go in that plane I need to work out whether it's correctly sitting on the coracoid in essentially uh, the antero 
posterior position, which is why now I'm viewing through the J port to assess this. So now pass the, the wire through the alpha port and then the next wire through beta. Next you bring the step drill. Initially I bring it on oscillate mode coming through the deltoid as sometimes the cephalic vein is sitting there. And then on forward to create, to create your step hole. And then the same with the beta. Again oscillate through the tendon and then forward to create your hole. Then you need to tap the holes. So now I'm looking through the J port, bringing this tap through the H port and just tap alpha. And then beta. When I tap beta, I place the cheer already inside the uh, tap. And then once you've tapped it, you can pass the cheer straight away. It just saves a bit of time. So now the tap, the cheer gets passed through the tap and back off the tap, leaving the cheer in place. And then through alpha you have the crochet hook and feed the cheer into the crochet hook using the suture manipulator through the E port. And retrieve the cheer. Now you insert the top hats. This one's the beta one first but it doesn't really matter. And then the alpha one. And make sure you leave the cheers long sticking out through the top of the screwdriver otherwise you won't have control of the top hat if it falls off the end of the screwdriver. Now using the short switching stick through E I'm just going to make the space a little bit bigger so that when I bring in the clear cannula I've got space. So the clear cannula comes through the M port and it has the long blue stops in it. So initially remove the alpha stopper and then pass the crochet hook down the alpha to pick up the cheer that's through the alpha top hat. And pull this down the clear cannula ensuring that you don't unload the cheer. Then place the cannulated drill sleeve over the cheer and clip the cheer so that the cannulated drill sleeve doesn't fall out of the clear plastic drill sleeve. Then repeat the whole process for the beta port, again removing the long blue stopper, passing the crochet hook down to pick up the cheer that's through the beta hole, and pass the cannulated drill sleeve over this cheer and again clip. The next step is to do the coracoid osteotomy. So first, using a burr through the H port, just use, make a stress riser as far medially as you can, and certainly well away from the beta top hat. And from a different port, the under surface of the coracoid is bird to create essentially a 270 degree or a 360 degree stress riser. The next step is to bring in the curved osteotome through the H port to complete your coracoid osteotomy.
you want to be gentle with the osteotome and just don't plunge through and just lever and try and strip it off. Now the coracoid is free, you screw in the long canated drill sleeves into the top hats. And if your wires were parallel, then they should screw in easily. If they don't screw in, it means that your wires weren't parallel. Once screwed in, you've got control. So now by rotating, you can peel off the medial side of the conjoint tendon to make sure this will be fully mobile, so you can pass it through the subscap tendon. Now we need to prepare the coracoid process. So there's always a little spike. So this is removed and now I'm viewing through D and the shave is coming in through E. And what you want is a nice flat on the surface of the coracoid to fit against your flat prepared glenoid neck. Sometimes the cannulated drill sleeves are a little bit too prominent and have been screwed through too far, so you just unscrew them and then carry on shaving. So once you're happy with your coracoid preparation, you need to start to get ready to pass it through your subscap. So with a long switching stick from the back, you can either use this to elevate the superior part of the subscap up or push the inferior part down. It depends on the case and which gives you the best view. In this case it's just lifting the top border of subscap up. And then pass the coracoid through the subscap in a rotating fashion at essentially 90 degrees and hitch the bottom edge on the inferior border of the subscap and then use it to push the inferior border down. And then place it on your glenoid according to your marks that you made earlier. Then you need to pass the long k -wire through the alpha port and pass it so it's coming out through the back of the glenoid. And then remove the canated drill sleeve and drill over the long k -wire. And you must make sure you clip the long k -wire as it comes out the back of the shoulder, otherwise when you remove the drill it can sometimes pull the k -wire with it. So drill through till you hit the far cortex of the glenoid and read off from the drill the size of the screw. So we can just see the 35 mark which is going through the coracoid just now. So we'll put a 38 screw through this one. So then load up the screw and insert it down using the cannulated screwdriver most of the way down and then later we'll remove the K wire and use the non cannulated screwdriver for the final bit of compression. And then repeat the same step for the beta. We've already passed the K wire down and again drill over this and this one will be a 38 as well so we can just see the 35 mark so pass the 38 screw down Then we'll pull out the long K wires from posteriorly and 
and then use the non cannulated screwdriver to really get the last bit of compression through beta and then through alpha. And then check in the joint and just check the level and how flush the coracoid process is. And then just check that you've got good excursion and good mobility of the conjoint tendon through the subscap split. And that's the end of the procedure.